Okay, isang mainit na pagbati muli sa ating mga kapatid sa Christian Filipino community sa Australia. Isang kagalakan na ako ay magkaroon muli ng bahagi sa inyo pong fellowship na ito sa pamamagitan ng pagtuturo ng kanyang mga salita. Uh, isang pagbati muli mula dito sa Sovereign Grace Christian Church of San Pedro. At ipagpapatuloy natin yung sinimula nating pag-aaral noong nakaraang buwan patungkol sa Recovering the Christian Mind. Pero bago natin gawin yan, muli ay lumapit muli tayo sa Panginoon at humingi tayo ng, ng tulong sa Kanya. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we would like to entrust to you our uh, discussion, our study today about recovering the Christian mind. We pray for uh, the Holy Spirit to help us, to give us understanding, to give us uh, a submissive heart, illuminations of mind so that uh, we will be able to see your truth and that uh, its connection to our own personal lives and even to our own community of Christians. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. We entrust to you your servant that he may be able to speak with uh, power and even with clarity for your glory and for the good of each one of us. It is, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, recovering the Christian mind. Kung matatandaan ninyo noong nakaraan, ay uh, sinimula natin ito sa pamamagitan ng isang observation mula sa libro ni Dennis Lewis na Losing Our Christian Mind. At sinabi niya, of all the things we've lost as Christian, I think we miss our Christian minds the most. So, anong ibig sabihin? Ang ibig sabihin, Marami sa marami, hindi man, sa lahat, hindi man lahat, pero maraming mga Kristiyano sa ating panahon ngayon ay hindi na nag-iisip tulad ng isang Kristiyano. At uh, naiimpluwensya na ang kanyang pag-iisip ng mga bagay na pag-iisip ng ating mundo. No? Many Christians in these generations is shaped and molded by the secular world of pragmatism. What is pragmatism? Pragmatism has the philosophy of what works no? and not by the Christian view and the, the Christian view's philosophy is what is right. So yun ang tinitingnan ngayon. Ano ba yung pakinabang nito? Paano ba makakatulong sa akin ito? Paano ba uunlad ang buhay ko rito? Paano ba ako magiging kilala sa pamamagitan nito? At hindi na tinitingnan. Tama ba ito? Kalooban ba ito ng Diyos? Ito ba ang direksyon na gusto ng Diyos para sa akin? Uh, yan ang isang malaking problema kung bakit pinili ko rin talakayin ang paksang ito tulad nung nagtanong nung nakaraan, nung tinanong sa atin ni Ronald, bakit nga ba ito yung ating topic? Because this is what is happening today. Ang ating mga mananampalataya in all walks of life ay naiimpluwensyahan na ng tinatawag nating uh, mindset ng ating Mundo. Pero ano ba yung pinaka-key principle bilang isang Kristiyano? Ito yung key principle eh, no? bilang isang Kristiyano ay uh, the stewardship of the mind is based on the lordship of Christ over the believer's life. Yan po ang dapat na maging malinaw sa atin na ang ating uh, pag-iisip, ang ating pananaw sa buhay, ang ating mga prinsipyo, ang ating mga batayan, ng mga pinagpapasyahan ay napaiilalim sa pagiging Panginoon, Panginoon ni Kristo sa ating mga buhay. Hindi na tayo ang Panginoon. Hindi na yung kalooban natin ang nasusunod, kundi ang kalooban na ng ating tagapagligtas. At yan ay dapat na maging malinaw sa bawat isa sa atin na mga mananampalataya sa panahong ito. The Lord is the one with absolute authority and dominion sa buhay ng isang mananampalataya. Okay. Now, noong nakaraang linggo rin, by way of uh, review, we ay uh, tiningnan natin yung general description of Christian mind. And uh, I, I told you last time na mayroong tatlong bagay na gusto kong makita natin ano, dito sa ating series na ito, sa ating at, at uh, actually tatlong sessions na ito. Una, tiningnan natin yung the general description of Christian mind and then today we'll be looking at the discipline of Christian mind and the next time we shall be 
uh, discussing the Christian mind and the role of Bible meditation. So, the general description of the of Christian mind. Tinan lang natin yung pinaka-highlights ng mga napag-aralan na natin. Ano? Una, nakita natin that Christian sees everything in the light of God. Yan ang pagkakaiba ng isang Kristiyano. Tinitingnan natin lahat ng mga bagay sa lente ng Diyos, sa pananaw ng Diyos. Yan ang isang uh, malinaw na dapat klaro sa bawat totoong mananampalataya ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Uh, we define what is right and wrong not on the public opinion or personal preference. We define what is right and wrong according to what God says. So yun ang una. Na pangalawa, na natinignan din natin noong nakaraan, the Christian sees every aspect of this present order as from God and His designing hand. So, yan ang ina natin. Lahat ng mga magagandang bagay na meron dito sa mundong ito. Lahat ng mga nakikita nating maayos dito sa mundong ito, galing sa Diyos yan. Ang totoo, lahat ng mga magagandang batas na meron sa isang bansa, gal- ang pag inugat mo yan, galing lahat yan sa Diyos. Ang isang malungkot lamang, marami ng batas ngayon na baluktot na. At alam natin, yan na hindi galing sa Diyos. Galing yan sa prinsipyo ng mundo at ng kaaway ng Diyos. No? Pero lahat na makikita natin magagandang bagay. Because sabi ng Bible, every good and perfect gift is from above. So dapat maging malinaw rin yan sa atin. At ganyan ang tingin ng isang mananampalataya. Pangatlo, the Christian sees the crippling effects of sin and human selfishness affecting every area of creation. Now, ang kasalanan, napakalawak ng kanyang sinakop. Napakalawak ng kanyang mga pinsala na ginawa. Uh, maging ang mga bagay na pwede nating sabihin ginawa ng Diyos na maganda ay ginamit din ng kasalanan para sa interest nito. Halimbawa, marriage is God's creation. Marriage is God's institution. Ang Diyos mismo ang nagtayo ng institusyon na ito. Pero anong, ano nangyari? Ano nangyari? Yung itong marriage na ito, pwede rin maging ano, gawain para ipakita ng tao ang kanyang selfishness, ang kanyang self-centeredness, para abusuhin ang kanyang partner, para sirain ang kanyang covenant dito at uh, kaya nga napakalaki at napakalawak ng tinatawag nating uh, rate ng divorce sa ating panahon ngayon because of the low view of many people in the aspect of marriage and many and many and many things no at marami pang iba hindi lang marriage eh, at uh, napakadami pa na pwede nating uh, makita halimbawa uh, a charitable institution is very good Yet, it can be a venue for what? For corruption. Hindi ba? A, a pulpit that is being used for the preaching of God's word can also be a venue to, uh, to uh, highlight the preacher's ego. And, uh, and also can also be a venue in, uh, to disseminate false teachings. So, yan po ang nakikita natin ngayon. So, Christian sees the crippling effects of sin and human selfishness affecting every area of creation. And not only that, the Christian sees the, the only hope of man and of the creation is Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ is not only the way to God, but He is the epitome of what is absolutely righteous. At to yan. Ang ating Panginoong sa Kristo lamang ang pag-asa. Sapagat siya lamang ang pumunta rito sa mundo na walang kasalanan. Hindi nagkasala, tinukso sa magkabi-kabila, ngunit hindi nasumpungang nagkasala. At si Kristo lang ang pag-asa, ang katotohanan, ang katubusan na ginawa ni Kristo, yung redemption na ginawa ni Kristo, ay magkakaroon din ng epekto sa creation. 
Kaya mababasa natin sa Romans chapter 8 that even the creation is groaning, groaning for the day of redemption. Sa araw ng kahustuhan, ng kaluta, katubusan upang maibalik na ang perfection, ang uh, kaganapan at kasakdala ng sangnilikhang ito na ginawa ng ating Panginoong Diyos. And then, uh, last but not the least, sa ating nakita last time, the Christian sees everything in the light of the world to come. The world is temporary and transient. We know that. The world is temporary and transient. Biblical minds always ask the question, how this issue that I am engaging with, whether it is life, politics, ambition, educational pursuit, relate to eternity? Anong, anong kaugnayan itong mga pinagpapagalang kong ito sa mga bagay na may kinalaman sa kawalang hanggang darating? Halimbawa, hindi masamang kumita ng pera, hindi masamang magtrabaho para kumita ng pera. Pero may mga tao na halos ibuhos na nila ang kanilang oras, ang kanilang panahon sa uh, pagtatrabaho, sa pagkita ng pera. At eh, hindi yan. Hindi, nat, hindi yan ang siyang uh, larawan ng isang taong nag-iisip na may kaugnayan yung ginagawa niya sa darating na panahon. Now, hindi, 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 ta, hindi masamang maging masipag. Kailangan natin yan. At kung anumang merong bunga ang ating pagpabagal, ito ay dahil gusto nating maggamit ang lahat, maging yung ating mga tinatangkilik para sa interes ng Ibanghelyo. O bakit mo gustong uh, magkaroon ng maraming degrees? Hindi rin masama yan. Pero tanungin mo ang sarili mo, mayroon bang kinalaman yan sa eternity? Kumukuha ka ba ng maraming degrees para magkaroon ka ng uh, power to penetrate perhaps the, uh, the, the universities, the world of the academy so that you can teach and preach and you can influence people about the gospel. And that is very good. But if it is only for prestige, for a uh, good reputations so that people will look, will, uh, look you up. And, and that is not, it has nothing to do with eternity. So, isang bagay din na dapat na maging malinaw yan. Christians sees everything in the light of the world to come. Now, let's go to our uh, second heading. The discipline of Christian minds. Itong ating pag-iisip ay dapat nating disiplinahin din na laging maiuugnay at maibabalik sa dapat na tamang pag-iisip ng isang mana ng palataya. Sapagat uh, uh, sa observation ni Harry Blamayer sa kanyang librong The Christian Mind, sabi niya, while Christians may worship and pray as Christians, they do not think as Christians. I, I, and, I, and I am in agreement with him. Marami mga Kristiyano, they profess to be Christians, they act as a Christian, they talk as Christian, but they never think as Christians. And this is a sad note, but a real note for many prof professing Christians today. We want to be called Christians. We want to be in the community of Christians. We love to hear the Christian principles, but most of the time, we still want to think what we want to think and we still want to do what we want to do. Even if it is uh, in contrary with the principle of the scriptures. At tandaan natin, kung ganyan ang takbo ng ating pag-iisip, nagsasabi tayo, kristyano tayo, and we, we fail to apply our Christian faith sa every sector ng ating buhay, inevitably, ang mangyayari sa atin, magdi-descend tayo doon sa thinking of the world. We will adopt the world's values. We will court the world's approval. We will pursue the world's symbol status. And consequently, the church will lose its distinctiveness, its power. Pero ang isang totoong kristyano, hindi dapat ganon. Ang isang totoong kristyano, mga kapatid, whether yung kristyanong yan eh, medyo immature pa, kulang pa sa kaalaman, 
no, kinakailangan pang lumago. O oh, isang kristyanong matagal na, maaaring pwede natin sabihin, mature na. Tandaan natin, ng bawat totoong kristyano ay merong mind of Christ. Which means, he is not only bend, but he has all the potential to see life the way God sees it. And this must be the priority of discipleship. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, and 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13 says, ito mababasa natin. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13, Therefore, Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon that grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yung ginamit na salita dito ni Peter na geared up the loins of your mind. Eh, alam niyo yung salitang geared up the loins. Eh, di ba dito yung ginagamit sa bewang? At yan, ang larawan yan ay ang mga Roman soldier pagka sila ay sasabak na sa isang uh, digmaan, ginigeared up nila, no? Yung binibigkisan nila ng maigi ang kanilang bewang. Ibig sabihin, inihahanda nila ang kanilang sarili sa labanan. Inaalis nila ang lahat ng sagabal sa labang ito. The same also is true with us. To gear, na, to gear up the loins of our mind means to prepare our minds for work, for service, or for Christian battle. We need to do whatever it takes to focus our thoughts on those things that allow us to obey and serve God with complete and unhindered devotion. So yun ang dapat nating makita. Now, mayroong tatlong bagay lang na gusto kong talakayin sa ilalim nitong paksa na the discipline of Christian mind. Una, the Christian and his renewed mind. Pero I will start with a note. All aspects of humanity are affected by sin, including the mind. And dapat nating tandaan yan. At kahit na tayo mga Kristiyano ay apektado niyan. Uh, nawala na yung kalalagayan natin nung ang tao ay hindi pa nahuhulog sa kasalanan. Ang kanyang isip ay uh, malinis, dalisay, walang kasalanan. Wala na yun. Human by nature are enmity with God and seek the autonomy from God. All aspects of humanity are affected by sin, including the mind, including the emotions, and our will. Ang, ang description nga ng scripture, no, patungkol sa mind ng bawat uh, tao ay ito. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. They are darkened in their understanding. Romans 1, 18 b so they suppress the truth. Nilalabanan nila ang katotohanan. Pinipigilan nila ang katotohanan. Romans chapter 1, verse 21 b They are senseless and futile in their thinking. Imagine that words. They are so um, very serious words na binanggit ni Apostle Paul. No? Pero itong isang bagay na gusto kong uh, i-clear din sa atin, Christian mind is different because Christian mind, though still affected by sin, though still um, has remaining sins in it, is regenerated and illumined by the Spirit of God. What do you think? Christian mind is different because Christian mind is regenerated and illumined by the Spirit of God. And it means, and it means, number one, meron tayong bagong pananaw, a new perspective. Anong ibig sabihin nun? The person whose mind is renewed focuses primarily on God. Nung hindi pa tayo nakakakilala sa ating Panginoong Sokristo, ang lahat ng bagay nakasentro sa sarili natin, sa personal nating interest. Ay maging nga minsan sa pagtungo natin sa church eh sa paghahanap natin ng mga maaring simbahan, eh, iniisip pa rin natin yung interest natin. Eh. Ano yung programa na maaring magkaroon ng uh, pakinabang sa'yo, yun ang hinahanap mo, 
No, hindi naman masama yun ang totoo. Pero yun, kung yan lagi ang siyang pangunahin, there must be something wrong because hindi ka pumupunta sa church for your own interest only. The first and foremost, you go to church to worship God together with fellow Christians, to give glory to God, to serve God, and not for your own interest. Kung ano man yung pakinabang na dulot dito, sekundarya lang yun. Ang unang-una, ang kalwalatian ng Diyos. May mga iba, naghahanap sila ng mga iglesia o mga simbahan na convenient sila. I can still remember, nung kami po ay wala pang church building na medyo mas malaki, nakatulad ng aming uh, uh, church, uh, or, uh, church building ngayon, maliit pa lang yung aming, nung nagsisimula pa lamang kami, doon lang sa may bahay, na, sa may bahay ko nagsisimula, may umatin sa aming isang family. Ay, sabi pa nga niya, pagkatapos ng service, eh, Pastor, Okay din naman yung preaching mo at pagtuturo mo. Sabi niya sa akin, kalang eh, medyo maliit itong simbahan ninyo at saka mainit. Eh, pasensya ka na. Baka hindi na kami makabalik dito. Maghahanap na lang kami ng mas, uh, medyo mas conveniente para sa amin. Uh, very honest naman siya doon sa kanyang sinabi. Pero ang, ang punto ko lang, ganyan ang, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan ang pagtingin ng iba. They are looking for a convenient church. Hindi mo na tinanong, is this church biblical? Ano ba ang tinuturo sa, sa church na ito? Is God the supreme focus of the worship of this church? Am I uh, going to become more Christ-like and uh, in attending in this church? How can be a channel of blessing to this church? Diba? Yun ang, dapat yun ang munang mga tanong eh. Pero ang nangyayari, sarili muna. Hindi dapat ganon. Ang isang totoo man na ng palataya, Iniisip niya, saan ko ba maluluwalhati ang Diyos? Paano ko ipi-please ang Diyos? It's good to find a good church. But first of all, you want to find a good church because in that church that you want to find, God is being glorified. God is being exalted. Christ's gospel is being proclaimed with clarity and with purity. So that's number one, the new perspective. But number two, eternity in view. True Christian is awakened to the fact that he or she is a stranger and pilgrim traveling to a real home. Yan ang isang Christian. Ang isang totoong Christian ay naglalakbay lang dito sa mundong ito. Nung hindi pa tayo mananampalataya, ang lagi nating nasa isip, yung, kung ano lang yung meron dito. Very limited to this world. Diba? The unsaved person can only think in terms of this world. The person who has been renewed by grace, however, is awakened to the fact that he is heading toward eternity. His real home. His real home. And yun ang, yun ang isang bagay na dapat paalala natin sa ating sarili. Ilagay natin sa ating isip from time to time. Maraming tao ngayon eh, ano eh, uh, parang they don't even think of that. They are scared to think of that. Maraming tao ngayon eh, ang, i, ang iniisip nila ay, their, yung pag, pag pinag-uusapan yung death, it's very remote in their thinking. But no, death is just but in a corner. No, it's, it's happening right now. Now that we are in this pandemic, we can see the reality of death. Even to those people who are in the pwede nating sabihin very uh, blessed in terms of material things in terms of talent in terms of opportunity just this week the granddaughter of uh, Henry C si John Catherine ay namatay binawi ng buhay at the age of 29 at the age of 29 and one good thing, eh, she is a professing Christian. Imagine nyo, itong si John Catherine, 
uh, bukod sa magandang babae, bukod sa matalino, nag-aaral sa ibang bansa, uh, uh, equestrian athlete, at uh, belong to the multi-billionaire family, the vice president of uh, SM Development Corporation. Eh, kinuha rin siya ng Panginoon kahit na gano'n ang kanyang kalalagayan. And someone, uh, isang bagay lang maganda. She is a professing Christian and that's wonderful. My, one of, uh, yung, isa sa, yung kapamangkin ng asawa ko, si Paul Harvin, ay binawian ng buhay at the age of 16, two weeks ago. 16 years old. Yung bata ay talagang very athletic. Magaling sa basketball. Batang bata, very vibrant, malakas. Maraming pangarap sa buhay. All of a sudden, nakasumama ang pakiramdam, namatay. Nakakalungkot, di ba? And the reality of death. And kaya nga tayo mga Christian, eh, binless tayo ng Panginoon na meron tayong focus. Ito yung focus natin, talaga yung eternity. Kung hindi ka Christian, katatakutan mo nga talaga yung, yung usapin na may kinalaman sa future. But if you're a Christian, meron kang eternity in view. Yung alam mo, na ikaw ay 24 hours to live now, no? it would have a dramatic effect on everything you you are going to do on that day. Pero sabi ko nga kanina, death is often remote in, in the thinking of many. The truth is, we are going to live forever if you're a Christian. But, not in this present order, but in the new heavens and new earth. With a renewed mind, we should be, a daily, we should be daily living on the threshold of eternity. So number, that's number two. And number three, um, not only that a new perspective, we have a new perspective, we have eternity in view, we have utter dependence on God. It means we understand our weakness and we rely upon the Holy Spirit in discerning His will. Nung hindi pa tayo nakakakilala sa Panginoon, we were self-sufficient and independent. Ay, gusto nga natin lagi independent tayo. Eh, no? We trusted in our own wisdom. We relied on our own strength and our own resources to do what we wanted to do. Pero naging mananampalataya tayo, we begin to see how foolish and unable we are to understand the will of God, the minds of God. We feel we are weak because of our sinfulness. And so we pray and we rely completely on the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to discern His will and to serve Him ac- acceptably. Yan ang ginagawa natin bilang mga mana ng palataya. Kaya nga tayo, may time, nananalangin tayo. We have a personal devotion. I hope you have your personal devotion. We have our family devotion. I hope you have your family devotions. No? Every day, you have to come to the Lord in prayer. You have to entrust everything in His hands. No? Regardless of busy tayo, we find time to pray. Eh, si Martin Luther nga, sinabi niya eh, I have many things to do today that I should give more time for prayer. And dapat ganyan tayo bilang mga Kristiyano because we are so dependent on God in many ways. We are, so, we are not depending on our own strength and in our own ability. So yun ang unang bagay uh, under this uh, heading the discipline of Christian mind. So now, let's go to number two. Uh, briefly, we'll be looking at the work of the Spirit in renewing the mind. So ito, medyo mabilis lang ito kasi parang question and answer lang gagawin natin. The question is this, how is our thinking set right? How is our thinking set right? By the operation and working of the Holy Spirit by the operation and working of the Holy Spirit. Yan yung ginawa ng Espiritu sa at, Santo eh. Kasi, alam nyo, nung hindi pa tayo mananampalataya, nung tayo, sabi ng Bible, tayo mga patay dahil sa ating pagiging makasalanan, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Makikita natin yan doon. Eh kung tayo ay eh, patay, spiritually, 
hindi tayo makakaunawa at hindi tayo makaka-respond spiritually sa anumang mga spiritual stimulant. Right? And that's why, kinakailangan ng operation ng Holy Spirit. Kinakailangan ng pagkilos ng Espiritu Santo sa buhay natin. At uh, eh, balikan lang natin itong John chapter 3 verses 3 to 8. Alam natin itong kwentong ito kay Nicodemus. Pero I think it's, but, it's just but proper to read this again. Sabi dito sa John chapter 3 verses 3 to 8, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that, is, that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sounds, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes, so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. That is the very breakthrough ng buhay natin bilang Kristiyano. The born again experience, the regenerating work of the Spirit. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng born again? Siguro alam naman natin na yan. Ang ibig sabihin nun ay ang pagbibigay ng buhay sa isang taong patay spiritual. At hindi tayo na born again on our own. At ulitin ko, hindi tayo na born again, maring narinig na ninyo ito, sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya natin. Hindi ka nga makakapanampalataya eh. Kasi patay ka eh. Kinakailangang may pagkilos muna, may pagkabuhay muna na mangyayari sa ating pagkatao. At yun yung regenerating work of the Spirit. Nung tayo ay maborn again, kaya tayo. Ang, ang naging resulta nun ay nanampalataya tayo. So regeneration, ang siyang mauuna bago ang conversion. At yun ang nangyari sa atin. No? Mayroong operation na nangyari sa ating mga isip, sa ating pagkatao. And then sa 1 John chapter 2, verses 20, and 26 and 27, ito yung mababasa natin. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you, have, oh, the, and you all have the knowledge. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you have received from Him abides in you. <coughs> and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as His anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just it has taught you, abide in Him. There is the Holy One na nananahan sa atin at nagtuturo sa atin. There is an... Hindi natin ma, mapaliwanag talaga ito ng gusto. There is, but there is a, an operation, a hidden operation that uh, is being... Uh, uh, working in our in our being as a Christian through the Spirit. So yun ang unang tanong. Pangalawang uh, tanong ay um, how how is oh sorry how does the Spirit renew our minds? How how does the Spirit renew our, our minds? He removes the spiritual scales from our eyes. He removes the spiritual scales from our eyes. Now, wala akong time para bigay sa inyo lang maraming verses. No? But uh, remember, uh, in John chapter 9, 9, there was a thrilling story regarding the confession of a born blind man na pinagaling ng Panginoong Sokristo. Eh, karamihan, lalo na ng mga perseyo, ay hindi naniniwala na siya ay pinagaling ni Jesus sapagkat ang tingin nila kay Jesus Christ ay makasalanan ang totoo eh. Because Jesus Christ, uh, sabi nila, ay lumalabag sa batas ng sabat. So, yung si Jesus Christ is, is doing against the, the law of God, especially on the, the law about sabat. So, ang tingin nila kay Jesus Christ is sinner. No? Kaya hindi sila maniwala na si Jesus Christ ang nagpagaling sa kanya. Pero ito na, mayroong, naka, mayroong very striking yung sagot ng blind man. Eh. Doon sa John chapter 9, verse 25, ito yung sinabi niya. Eh. Uh, sabi niya, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. 
One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. Yan lang alam ko. I was blind, now I see. Yan, yan, yan ang larawan ng tinatawag natin born again experience. Ako'y dating bulag. Ngayon nakakakita na. Hindi ko naiintindihan ang mga bagay na may kinalaman sa pananampalataya. Ngayon naunawaan ko na. Hindi dahil sa aking talino na taglay, kundi dahil sa pagbibigay buhay ng Espiritu Santo sa akin. At kasama na riyan ay ang pagbibigay liwanag sa aking isip. Okay? Pero hindi lang God removed the spiritual scales from our eyes, kundi isa pa sa uh, ginagawa ng Holy Spirit ay ito. He is continually opening our eyes to the truth or to the will of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 19, uh, Paul says, The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you. What are the riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe. It's wonderful, brethren. There is an ongoing process of spirit's operation that will only be completed even when we get to heaven. Okay? So another question is this. What is this instrument the spirit is using? Of course, the instrument is none other than the word of God. For the word of God, according to Psalms 119 verse 105, your word is a lamb to my feet and a light to my path. Verse 130, the unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. Verse 169, let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 3 to 6, ito po ang ating mababasa. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as, as Lord, with ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let your light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory in the face of Jesus Christ. So, it is through the word of God that the Holy Spirit opened our eyes to behold the beauty of Christ. Now, previously, we saw no beauty in Him that we should desire Him. But when the Holy Spirit opened our spiritual eyes, we show the lab, we, we see the loveliness of Christ of Scripture. Now I can still remember, yung nabasa ko many years ago patangkol dun sa isang atheist who, who, who wants to uh, destroy the, the Word of God by uh, telling to the people that the Word of God, that this Bible is full of contradiction and that, that, uh, that the thing about Jesus Christ is just but a myth. So, he accepted the challenge by reading the Bible and tried to see everything na sa tingin niya ay may contradiction at hindi totoo. And then, when he reached the book of Matthew and finished it, he said, I began to fall in love to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what the Holy Spirit is doing in the hearts and minds of His people. When we understand the things of God, we understand the beauty of Christ. When the Holy Spirit opens our minds, we understand who Christ really is and what He has done for us. So that is what the Holy Spirit is doing. The Spirit also enables us to see how the Scripture applies to our daily life so that we do not treat it as just a book 
of abstract truths, but a book that shows us how to live in this present age. This is the book that we really need in order for us to live what is proper, what is pleasing in the sight of God in this sinful world. So this is, this is how God is doing to us. We began to see the, uh, the valuability that this book is really a treasure. Ito ay isang totoong kayamanan para sa atin. Okay? So, now let's go to, now, to the last uh, point uh, under this uh, heading, the discipline of Christian mind. So, unang-una, tiningnan natin uh, the, uh, yung uh, sorry, <coughs> sorry. Nakita natin una yung the Christian in his renewed mind and then the work of the Spirit in renewing our mind and ngayon ay tingnan natin in our last uh, part the Christian duty in renewing the mind the Christian duty in renewing the mind now, tandaan natin mga kapatid ang Holy Spirit ang nagbukas ng ating isip ang Holy Spirit ay nanahan sa ating pagkatao ang Holy Spirit ang nagbigay sa atin ng buhay we have the mind of Christ, but we have also the responsibility to renew our mind. We have also the responsibility to, conti- to maintain uh, the Christian mind. Eh, di ba, ano man ang nilalagay mo sa computer natin, yung computers nat- mga computers natin, they are running and working, di ba, according to the program installed in it. Eh, yung aking sasakyan na luma eh, nire-rehistro ko every year yan tapos uh, something like I think two or three years ago no, nung nire-rehistro ko ha, umaga pa lang nandoon na ako sa LTO eh, ay magagabi na hindi pa ako tapos sabi ko bakit ganun yung mga nauna sa akin eh, tapos na ako hindi pa sabi kasi sir eh, hindi matrace yung ano yung yung record no ng owner ng sasakyan ninyo. Sabi ko, bakit? Eh, every year, nag-ano ako, nagpaparehistro ako, sabi niya. Sabi niya kasi, nireprogram kasi yung computer dito sa LTO, kaya yun ang nangyari. So, ang epekto, ha, akala ko hindi matatapos, eh, inabot na ako ng gabi. Ako na yata yung pinakahuli doon bago natapos yung rehistro because of the, the reprogram ng system ng uh, LTO, no? Now, in Christian life, there is the necessity to reprogram our mindset in order to achieve a real transformation in life. And that is what Paul meant when he said in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Means our minds must be governed and programmed by Christian values. Now, alam natin, now, pagka tinanong mo yung mga biologists, ano ba yung, ano ba yung mga elements nandiyan, ano? Ano ba yung mga himaymay, mga cells na bumubuo ng ating brain? They can explain it. They have their way to explain it scientifically. But you know, bilang mga Kristiyano, nakita natin sa liwanag ng kanyang salita, na itong brain, itong mind, itong intellect exists for the glory of God. So, ano mang klaseng pag-iisip meron ka, mayroong maaaring ikaw eh, pwede nating sabihin, talagang genius ka, no? o kaya naman simple ka lang mag-iisip. Tandaan mo, ang isip mo, if it is not used in the service of Christ, it will malfunction. It, ha- it, it malfunctions. Right? Now, that's maybe uh, a hard words, you know? Pero totoo yun. Kung ang isip natin, kung ito ay hindi naka-in-tune sa Panginoong Iso Kristo, may malfunction yan. If our mind is squeezed by the fleeting fashions and values of this world, we will not only be, we will not, 
be against the world, of course, but we will be against the Lord. We will be against the will of God. And sabi nga ni Apostle Paul, eh, noong, di ba, naalala mo, naalala nyo nang si Apostle Paul nandoon sa, sa uh, road of Damascus na nakilala niya ang Panginoong Sokristo. Ang sabi ng Panginoong Sokristo sa kanya, you are kicking against the goads para kang sumisipa sa isang matalas na bagay. Yung paglaban mo sa akin, yung pagpipersecute mo sa mga Christian, you are kicking against the goads. Ay, ganun din yan eh. Ang punto niyan eh. Kung uh, tayo, hindi natin nagagamit ang ating isip at nagagamit natin ito sa mga bagay na labag sa ating Panginoong Sokristos, labag sa kalooban ng Diyos, we are kicking against the goad. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul sa Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus. The point is, our thinking must be reprogrammed to the way Christ thinks. Now, let me illustrate the conflicting values of the world and of the will of God. Now, tingnan nyo itong dalawang contrast na ito. Ano sinasabi ng mundo? Live for yourself and get all you can. Diba? Yan ang sabi ng mundo. Sabi ng salita ng Diyos. Acts 20.35 It is more blessed to give than to receive. Anong sabi ng mundo? The greatness is measured by the success. Pero anong sabi ng Diyos? The greatness is measured by your service. Matthew 20 verse 26 Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Tama? Sabi ng mundo, seek after the things of this life, after food, drink, clothes, money. Ano sabi ng salita ng Diyos in Matthew 6:33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If we conform to the world, we will become more and more like it. But if we choose God's will, we are transformed and more, um, more and more into the image of God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, yun ang isang bagay na dapat nating tingnan. Pero hindi lang yun. Brethren, our minds must be saturated with God's Word. If we are to see our minds renewed and our thoughts patterns transform, we must first of all make sure that we develop a working knowledge of the Bible. Dapat yung salita ng Diyos. Binabasa natin. Minimeditate natin. Kung kinakailangan sa uluhin natin. Dapat saturated yung ating isip ng salita ng Diyos. Alam niyo ba kung bakit? Hindi natin alam ang mangyayari eh, sa hinaharap eh. Hindi natin alam kung ano mangyayari sa isang certain point of the society. And that is, I think, happening right now in Australia. Merong mga batas na ipinapasa sa inyong parliament na hindi katanggap-tanggap sa pananampalatayang kristyan. Nakadarating ang araw Manganganib na ang buhay mo dahil sa paninindigan mo at dahil sa pananampalataya mo. Sino ang magiging kakampi mo sa panahong ikaw ay nasa isang alanganing sitwasyon? Sino ang magiging kakampi mo sa panahong ikaw ay mag-iisa? Darating ang time, hindi natin alam. Pwede maging dumating ang time na maaring you will be alone at ang magiging kakampi mo lang at ang magiging kasangga mo lang ay ang mga bagay na natutunan mo at nalaman mo, naunawaan mo, at nailagay sa isip mo na mga katotohanan kaling sa salita ng Diyos. Yan ang dapat matandaan. No? That's why we, we need to saturate our minds with the Word of God. Make this one a top priority and you will be well on the way to Christ's likeness. But, baka meron lang akong kinakausap dito, o maaaring merong nanonood sa atin, o maaaring kasama rin natin dito sa ating 
samahang dito, no? Kasi hindi ko naman lahat alam ang totoong kalagayan ng inyong puso. Ah, maaring sa tingin mo, hanggang ngayon na stranger ka pa sa Christian faith. Baka hindi ka pamana ng palataya. No, kung hindi ka pamana ng palataya, itong pinag-uusapan nating patungkol sa Christian mind, hindi mo talaga ito mai apply sa buhay mo. Ang kailangan mo talaga ngayon ay ano? Ay magkaroon ka ng totoong kaugnayan kay Kristo. Kinakailangan mo ng kaligtasan. Kinakailangan mo ng liwanag galing sa Kanya. Kinakailangan mong maintindihan kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng Ibanghelyo ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Kinakailangan mong lumapit sa Kanya ngayon. Tumakbo sa Kanya ngayon. Naalala ko lang, meron kasi kaming paboritong kanta rito sa church namin na uh, madalas namin inaawit yung awit na I Run to Christ. Uh, sabi roon sa isang, sa isang stanza, I run to Christ when chased by fear and find a refuge sure. Believe in me, His voice I hear, His words and wounds. Secure. If you are not a Christian today, run to Christ while there is yet time. Manalangin tayo. Salamat sa iyo, aming Panginoong Diyos, sa mga salita mo na amin na pagbulay-bulayan ngayon na way isulat mo ang lahat ng ito sa aming mga puso. Ito ang aming dalangin sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at magkita po tayo sa ating uh, interaction this coming Saturday. God bless!